This week for EMN5, I'm going to go through the anatomy of a slit lamp exam. It's kind of a tricky machine to use sometimes because there's tons of dials. They're not always intuitive, but it's a really helpful machine, so it's good to know how to use it. So let's start with the basics. First, we have to turn it on. Usually this light switch is underneath the forward part of the table that faces you. There's a couple adjustments that you actually do for your own eyes as well. The first, you can move these black pieces back and forth, kind of like binoculars, so it's comfortable for you. And then there's also these dials on the front, which kind of change for the prescription of your eyes. The rule here is that if you don't wear glasses or you're currently wearing your glasses, just put it at zero. Next, we have some different positions for the patient. The first one is for the patient's own comfort, and that's the table adjustment. So there's usually a lever on the front part of the table towards you. Adjust it so it's comfortable for the patient and yourself. The next part of the patient's positioning is actually for the exam, not the patient's comfort. And there's two things you have to do. Number one, the patient's forehead has to be touching the white strip. Otherwise, you will never be able to focus correctly on the patient's eyes. The second thing is that this black mark here on the side, that has to be even with the patient's eyes. The way to do that is to adjust the patient's chin. Um, and this chin rest can be moved up and down by this metal dial here on the side. Next up, we have to aim the light. To move the light up and down, you're going to dial the joystick either counterclockwise or clockwise. In order to move it front and back, you can either move the whole machine base or for fine adjustments, just move the joystick back and forth. The same applies to moving it side to side. The reason you're going to move the base forward and backward is to focus on different parts of the eye. For example, if you want to look at the lashes and lids that are closest to you, the machine is going to be moved a little further back. Then to start focusing on parts of the eye that are a little further from you, you're going to move the machine gradually a little closer to the patient. Next, we have a bunch of different adjustments of the beam. So first up, width. This little dial down here, you can start to play with it, and you can see that the width of the beam is going to get more narrow and more wide. We can also adjust the height of the beam. This dial or switch is usually up on the top of the machine. It'll either dial like a clock or it'll flip back and forth across the machine. But the main thing here is that you'll notice that as the beam starts to get larger and larger and larger, eventually there will be this little click and you'll max it out and the beam will suddenly turn cobalt blue. Now this is really important because this is the blue light that you need for a fluorescein exam. So remember, the same switch that does the height, if you max that out, that's where your cobalt blue light is for the fluorescein exam. You can also adjust the beam vertical and horizontal. This probably isn't of much use to us in the ER, but it's something to note if the whole machine isn't making sense and it seems like all the dials are backwards, it could be that someone accidentally flipped the beam horizontal instead of vertical how we normally use it. Now on top of this height switch, you're going to see another little switch. Now for the most part in the ER, you're never going to need to touch this switch, but if someone else has messed with it, it might not be in the correct position, so you need to at least know what it does. There's a couple different filters and intensity on this switch. One of the positions will turn it this tealy green color. This is not the same as the cobalt blue for the fluoro exam. It's just a different filter that helps ophthalmologists look for red blood vessels and red cells. So where do we want the switch? We want it on just the highest intensity for now. So just remember that teal green is not the same as the cobalt blue exam. There also might be some different switches for magnification. Just start it at the lowest and you can always adjust from there. And lastly, the beam usually has an intensity dial. Here on this machine, it's down on the table. That'll make the light brighter and less bright. can be helpful, especially if the patient has some bad photophobia. Okay, now it's time for the exam. So first, I recommend focusing in on the lashes and lids. Then you're going to move your light slightly forward with the joystick until it focuses on the conjunctiva and sclera and then scan over to look at the cornea. From there, you can move the light 45 degrees and take a look at the anterior chamber, and then move forward slightly more with the joystick until you're focused on the iris and the lens. At that point, use that height dial to move you into a cobalt blue light, and you can do the fluorescein exam. Okay, let's review. Power button, then we have to adjust the patient. You can adjust the table height in front and make sure that the forehead is touching the white strip and that the eyes are even with the black lines by adjusting the chin rest. You can move the light up and down and back and forth with the joystick and at the base. To adjust the beam, you can use the intensity dial. You can adjust the width. The height dial when maxed out is your cobalt blue that you'll use for a fluorescein. You can also adjust the light vertical and horizontal by dialing this whole top part of the machine back and forth. And remember, just don't touch the switch. The green filter is not the same as the cobalt blue. And for now, just start with the lowest magnification. A couple quick tips. When you're using the fluorescein strip, it can actually cause some very small abrasions on the eyes, so try to put it down in the lower lid or off to the side so you're not making a false positive abrasion during your exam. Well, that was a lot to go through. Thanks for joining us this week on the anatomy of the slit lamp. There are a bunch of fantastic videos out there that explain this whole process to much more detail. You can check out Dr. Kapasi's and Ali Rida's video on YouTube. 
LEM also has some good educational videos, and the Off the Book is a great resource. Thanks for joining us this week on EM in 5.